Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Thursday, August 4th, 2022. I felt that the markets were disjointed today. They did not move in, move in unison and often really stood at odds with why one was moving in the direction the others were not. Um, in any case, though, here in the S&P, the market didn't manage to get up just a little bit higher, put a little bit higher high. So let's kind of jump in. I am continuing to use the alternate count number two. And that one suggests that we have completed a primary A wave, and that would be at the 36.39 low. I have discussed it before. I've kept it open. I've continued to run it in parallel with the other, which is the intermediate C wave remains in progress. In fact, this would have completed minor wave one, and this would be a minor wave two. And so the way I'm counting this particular move off of that low, I still favor that it's an ABC and not a one, two, three, four, five to complete an A wave. So it, it either way, in fact, I will do it right now just so that there will be no question uh, that, that this is what I'm favoring. Because even if it is in the intermediate A wave to begin primary wave B, this still can be an ABC. So both still running absolutely together. Both still needing the market to let us know. And again, uh, me putting this up yesterday did generate some anger from some of the some subscribers. And again, I'm saying that I'm presenting something which is a possibility, which does carry a probability factor of being in force. So, but I am by no means, and again, I say, I'm by no means saying this is exactly what's happening. I am giving two scenarios. And within that, both are moving in a direction that is totally acceptable and within the rules for both. So the only entity or the only thing that can tell us which is which is the market itself. So as we wait, uh, I continue to trade without a bullish or bearish bias and trade the price action. So when the market's going to go up and that's where the, it's heading and it, it's going to continue, why wouldn't I buy it? But I'm wrapping around what I feel we may be seeing soon. But in the meantime, I continue to give upside analysis and where the market could possibly go and how it will get there. And if it's going to turn what that should look like, if that's going to be a high. So again, it's so that we can make decisions when we're trading as to, oh, do I sell this or do I buy this? And where's the supply and demand and where can they go? Now, I'm going to go drop this down to the four hour. And we're in <clears throat> what I can feel is that's the A, the B. And so we got five waves to put in for wave C, which I think we've done one, two, three, four. And now we're in five, which also is not necessarily extending, but forming its own five wave structure, which may be extending, which would suggest that this is one and two. Then this could be three and four. And we have one more leg. Or it's one, two, one, two. Okay, that's an ABC. That was the high. And actually we did eke out, but drifted right below, back below. So the close on a closing basis, it's going to come in lower. So either way, this could be leading to yet another <clears throat> attempt to move higher. So I'm leaving it open. Right now, one, two, three, four, we're in the fifth. The fifth is forming its own five, whether we're in one, two, three, four, and we're going to now go up into five. 
And if that's the case, right there, wave five would be equal to 0.618 of wave three, and that comes in at 42.15. And then we have additional 618 out there, and that's at 42.50. So that's the zone. And I think that that could complete this C wave. It could complete wave five and the C wave. Additional upside drives us towards the 100% where wave five would be equal to wave three, and that comes in at 4298. And right now, I kind of have to leave it that way. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pull this down to one to here and the two. And this is one, two, three, four, five, and three. So I could do that as well. Give it more room because three cannot be the shortest way. And we would also expand that. Sorry about that. I just noticed. But I put one as the... Ah... Bear with me as I go through my exercises. Because I, I looked a little bit too quickly. I'm going to move it and redo very quickly. Pull down that Fibonacci as well. Take that. Pull it down to there. Okay. So <clears throat> here we are again, not too much further. So now the 618 is actually 4278. And the upper, or this, this further out is 4250. So the wave five is 4278. But the 50% is at 4240, and that also works. And then we got 4240 to 4250, and then 4278 on the top. And I think that is kind of where wave five completes, and then the C wave, and then possibly the minor four, or possibly minor four and intermediate wave A. So we got we can continue to run them in congruently and let the market fold unfold the way the market's going to unfold without putting so much on it that when they change and they determine they're going to go in this direction or they're going to go sideways or they may go down a little bit up further, it it ruins a lot of people's days. And to me, it's like, well, no, it doesn't have to. And with, with some understanding and realize how markets move and what goes on, I think positions can be put on and things can be done. But now you're going to have to kind of reconfigure how you want to do it. And it's going to have to be quantitatively versus anything else. Then you're going to be fitting in. Um, so we have a lot of things going on in volatility. There are a lot of things going on, other things that are being purely quantitative. And market moves are being based on that index. Then you've got a lot of other stuff. So here we are. For tomorrow, it's expiration. All are involved. And it should be wild. Interesting how this all plays out, but it should be wild. And <clears throat> it's coming on the anniversary of um, when Saddam Hussein, God bless him, he invaded Kuwait and threw the oil market into a tizzy, threw... Um, the markets into a major downturn and threw our country in, into war. So it was pretty wild. Um, in any case, that would be Saturday because it was August the 6th, but I remember trading it. Now, expiration. It should be well played out in all directions, and it's going to be interesting. So we have upside downside, it's all going to remain the same. We do need to finish upside. So at some point, let me say at some point, I would think we get up to 4,200 at least. And likely we'll shoot above it because it will suddenly become very comfortable and they'll just go. Um, but it, that's going to be more dependent on how far they push than components, of course. And how which which components are getting pushed, and are they collectively in, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, but the market does have the potential to go there. 
downside, if it completes, I would anticipate initial rejection. And that initial rejection for the S&P could drive it down 25, 30, 35 points quickly, where they'll just drop. And it's like, wow. Um, and so a lot of a lot of traders, a lot of people are going to be trapped. And so there'll be activity. Anyway, I would look for that. I would look for it to break. And now I'm sitting on the four hour chart. I'd look for it to break the first of all, the, the four hour 20, the four hour 50s. And then you will have some FIB support at 4,017 was resistance, now support. And then the 200s. Could that happen all in one day? That would be 100 points. I've seen it. We've seen it on both the upside and the downside from the S&P. So yes, it could happen. All right. I am going to leave it there. Um, play both sides. That's all I can tell you. Uh, pay attention to the moving averages. Pay attention because they are leading. See, they're, they're all pointing up. And this is on a four-hour basis, so it takes a, it takes some time, if not necessarily also a shock, but if it's just going to lumber down, da, 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 it's going to take longer to turn these. So, and these are going to be telling you, okay, which trend is picking back up. They all have to turn and they all have to point down to say that, yep, downtrend, back in action. Is that going to happen at 3,900? Is it going to happen at 3,800? Is it going to happen at 3,600? I don't know. But I would suspect somewhere in here. And it's going to look pretty bad. So, again, while I say that's going to happen, what it is, I don't know yet. I do expect a correction. I do expect the market to drop. I mean, we're in an up. We're, we're moving higher, so the market will correct this. But whether that's a resumption of the downtrend, to be determined. But it'll be very tradable. All right, leaving it there. Our next update will be on Sunday, the 7th.